Hello and welcome everyone to another Sales Hacker webinar. Thank you for hanging out with us for the next 45 minutes to an hour or so. This is gonna be a super fun one. I am joined by my man, Andrew Mewborn. Andrew, welcome. Am I the only one that actually waves on Zoom here? Or <laughs> other people doing that too? <laughs> I do like the double peace sign, yeah. sometimes the wave, it's all, all over the place. Yeah, hey everyone, how's it going? I'm excited to be here with the legendary Scott Barker. <laughs> Thank um, you, brother. Should I give a little intro about me, Scott, or what do you think? Or should yeah, we just yeah. get into it? So I can see people kind of like mm -hmm. trickling in now. So we'll we'll hold off on uh, on the intro just yet. More people are coming. We had almost a thousand people sign up for this one. So super cool. Obviously, a topic a lot of people are thinking about. We're all working from home. We're probably thinking maybe I should up my LinkedIn game a little bit. Uh, so we've got a really cool uh, kind of workshop. Really, this is gonna be a bit of a new format for Sales Hacker. You guys all know kind of the webinars we do twice a week. This is gonna be a workshop where we're gonna live, uh, actually break down some, some profiles uh, from the community. So it should be a fun one and would love your thoughts and feedback on if you'd like to see more, more workshops. Uh, we did uh, an email kind of uh, sequence breakdown the other week that was live, which was really cool. But um, So before we get into it, uh, really quick housekeeping. So number one, these are all recorded. So if you do have to jump off for whatever reason, uh, your, your dog is biting your ankle, you got to go close a deal, your kid is screaming, whatever it is, it's all good. We'll send this out uh, within about 24 hours. And then second, like I said, this is a workshop. So I know Andrew uh, probably too well uh, at this point, um, and we can catch up anytime. Uh, the reason we're, we're doing this is for the community. So if you have specific questions, uh, please go to the Q&A section. I'll be manning it um, and get your questions in. Get them in early um, as it pertains to this topic. And we'll be kind of rolling them uh, in as we go. And lastly, it's always way more fun when we know who we're actually hanging out with. So if you don't mind, jump in on the chat. Introduce your name, your title company you're with, say hello. It's, uh, it's a lot more fun. I can see someone's from Vancouver, BC, breathing in the smoke. So anyone on the West Coast knows there's a ton of smoke right now. Uh, John, I feel you. I'm in Vancouver as well. Um, all right, Andrew, let's start first with the superhero origin story of Mr. Andrew Mewborn. Oh, How gosh, did you come? <laughs> it's such a cool company outreach how did you get to where you're at today oh man let's uh we'll just start i could talk you out for a couple hours on that but um first <laughs> off let me let me say hi to bridget you wave too shout out to bridget we got joel from houston uh international too lots of canadians so scott i'm sure you're bringing lots of canadians you know fellow vancouverian here i don't know if that's how you pronounce it but then we got penny maryland from everywhere so cool um but to start off, uh, how, let's talk about how I got to outreach because um, <laughs> it's an interesting story. Um, so how I got to where I am today, you know, I, I absolutely just love sales in general, sales strategy, sales process, go to market process, all that. Um, I was actually uh, an electrical engineer before coming to outreach, um, was trying to build a business in solar. Um, and while we were, you know, doing the engineering side, I was also trying to sell and, you know, the engineering products we were building. Um, in that process, I was like, wow, this, this whole selling thing is so inefficient. Like we can automate a lot of this. We can make this a way better process. Um, so after, you know, being done with, with, with that business there, uh, I wanted to join a startup and that was outreach, right? So it was about 20 to 30 people at the time. Um, when I joined and at the, at the time, I think we were like one to $2 million in revenue or so. And now we're, we're looking into the, uh, you know, um, way higher than that <laughs> so uh, way higher than that maybe 100 million plus so um yeah you know started outreach about five years ago at that point and from there you know started more on the technical side and then of course i still had the love for sales so eventually moved my way over to the um sales side of the business and now i'm an account executive over at outreach that's the origin story that's awesome man and yeah. rumor has it your employee what was employee like 10 or 20 or something 
something like that yeah it's on a yeah. jacket somewhere but <laughs> <laughs> i don't know the actual number early early where i was sitting next to uh manny every day uh which was kind of nerve-wracking my seat was right next to him for the first year or two so that was a wow. little interesting but learned a lot at that point um and really just building this this high-tech uh business here i bet man i bet yeah. what what did you learn like to be such an effective seller now, and, and I know you're, you're crushing it all the time at Outreach, what did you learn from those other roles you had? Because you had a few different roles uh, at Outreach. Would you suggest that to people on the call that, that dip your toes in a few different areas? Did it make you ultimately a better seller, a better grasp on the overall go-to-market strategy? Wow, wow, that's a great question. This could so, be another uh, webinar, I think. This could be a whole other webinar. Long story short, depends on your objective, right? Um, I never, I never wanted to go to, you know, I thought MBAs were cool and I wanted to go to business school at one point, but then I said, why not just like learn business while doing business, right? So that was my objective when I started. Um, so that was one. Objective number two was like, uh, my mom, when I was a kid, always told me like, hey, she's an entrepreneur, right? So she was always like, hey, if you can build and you can sell, you're unstoppable. So I had the building part down and I was like, how do I get into this sales part and just like make that one of my superpowers, right? Um, and so that's how I landed at Outreach, my love for that. Um, and again, I'm an engineer by night. I can, you know, I, I build products too. So um, yeah, just really wanted to, to understand that sales portion. Um, and so going back to your question, Scott, of like, do you recommend it for everyone? It depends on your goals. If, if you want to climb the ladder, you know, vertically and, 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 and that's your goal, um, long-term, then, then, you know, I wouldn't move around. Um, cause people mm -hmm. see that as being indecisive, but if you, you know, if you want to get a holistic understanding of a business at the right business, right? Like a high growing business and your goal is like for me, right? I want to be running my own SaaS organization one day. Um, a very large one. So in that case, that was my goal. So what I want to do is understand each business unit, how it functions, how it works, what's the optimal way to, to make that business unit run. Mm -hmm. So yeah. again, depends it's on your well objective. Put. Yeah. Yeah. Well put. I think there's almost like these two tracks. It's like, yeah. Do you want to be someone who climbs, climbs a ladder and you're a high performer and you're killing it in a hyper successful mm -hmm. career? Or do you look at it more of like the skill building that is going to allow you to acquire skills almost on someone else's dime and then repurpose those skills when you, when you ultimately need them to, you know, start your own thing. So, um, I like it, man. All right. Yeah, let's, let's, let's dive straight into it. So we're talking about LinkedIn, talking about LinkedIn and you know, you've, you've had a, a, a pretty incredible run on, on LinkedIn. You're, you're getting a lot of traction. I see you. Why do you think, a lot of B2B salespeople are still sleeping on, on LinkedIn a little bit and all these called personal branding, social selling, building community, whatever you want to call it. Uh, why do you think, you know, it, it's grown in popularity, but still that's like, I bet the number is like 5% of people that are actually showing up consistently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, there, there's a couple of reasons, like, and I could, I could be completely wrong about this, right? So a um, couple of reasons why I think, you know, it is, is one, um, people aren't sure of the, yet sure of the outcomes that it produces, like being mm -hmm. on LinkedIn, posting on LinkedIn, right? Um, and I don't think we talk enough about those outcomes, right? To give you an example, like, I did a post the other day. I was like, you know, in the past six weeks, I've booked 11 of my own meetings with, with my, you know, accounts, right? And that was just me posting on LinkedIn, not sending any, you know, using really any sequences, but a one-step sequence to add my prospects on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. um, right? So super, super beneficial in that sense. And, you know, there's an example here where, you know, someone, I don't know, here's Scott in our notes, like Amy Quick sourced 10 million net new and pipeline all through LinkedIn in January, right? She's got about 20,000 LinkedIn followers. Um, so I, I think it, it's not understanding what the outcomes of that can be. And it's not an instant gratification. It takes time. It takes effort, right? Like you can't just post and then be like, you know, Scott Barker, 
right? Mm -hmm. So you can't post one time and be Scott Barker. Um, so it does take time and effort and consistency um, in doing it. That's reason number one, I think, right? And, that, and that's hard for a lot of us. We got a lot going on. I don't even have kids yet. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't imagine like, like you know, mm -hmm. if I had kids the amount of time, I wouldn't have you know, I would want to just be with my kids. So shout yeah. out to all you kids. It's, it's tough and time wise. Right. Um, but there's that. And then the second reason is, is we're not incentivizing it enough in organizations, right? Like, you know, it, it, it's, it is a sensitive topic because there is like, we, we know it can help. And if we know it can help, then there's like, are we incentivized to do it? Well, that's the tough part, right? And you don't want to be in organizations like, hey, all of you sellers have to be posting on LinkedIn. Like, no one wants to do that, right? But mm -hmm. it, it, at the same time, it is part of the modern outbound process, right? Yeah. Like, if, if I told you, Scott, hey, hey, Scott, tomorrow you have a stage of 2,000 people to, to say something, that whatever you want to say online, would you take it? Mm -hmm. Of course. And that's what LinkedIn is, right? Like mm -hmm. you have that stage, you have that platform to say whatever it is you want to say under your terms, right? So, you, and you can control that process. Um, mm -hmm. But then again, right, like it, it goes back to that whole, we don't incentivize it, right? And like, that's another question we should talk about. How do we start to incentivize people if we know, and sales leaders out there know it, it should be part of the process. We just don't know how to get everyone doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, so let me, I want to ask you, or what are your thoughts? How could we maybe incentivize that? Right. Like in order to, to bring it into the modern outbound sales process and have more people utilize it. Yeah. It's, it's a, almost like a philosophical discussion when you get there, because yeah. I think <laughs> what, what holds a lot of people back is fear of judgment from others, mm -hmm. right. From their peers, putting themselves out there, just like, you know, back to your analogy of speaking. You wouldn't force all of your salespeople to go speak on a stage if they were like, listen, I'm not, I'm not comfortable doing that. So it's kind, of, it's kind of a similar thing where it almost crosses the threshold of like sales leaders need to link with HR and, and see if that's okay, right? Like, can you put a KPI, a metric for posting on LinkedIn when people maybe don't feel comfortable? I'm not, I'm not sure. You know, yeah. it's, it's certainly an it's interesting tough. world we're going to get to. Mm -hmm. And then you start getting into also this, this water of like, who, who owns your LinkedIn? Is it you or is it your company? If you sign up with a company email, like even, all of these, all of these yeah. questions are going to become more and more interesting <laughs> as time goes <laughs> yeah. and people build these brands that like ultimately may have more influence we well, are already seeing it have way more influence than like a company page. Like your comp no one listens to company pages anymore, but they'll listen yeah. to someone who's at the company because people want to, um, you know, interact on a, a human level. So quickly tying it back to, to results. Cause I think that's important to frame up this conversation. What results, and we talked briefly before this, what results have you personally seen if someone who's on this and like, I'm thinking I dip my toes into LinkedIn, but I'm busy. Maybe I do have kids. I've got all this thing. Can I handle another thing? What results have you seen? Um, and has it all been worth it? Absolutely. So short answer is yes, absolutely been worth it. Um, a couple of reasons. One results, right? Like number of meetings I've just been able to get with, with my own accounts it has been phenomenal i've gotten like 11 in the past six weeks which right now is like not a huge number but it's very difficult right now and that's people coming to me saying hey i like your stuff i'm interested in outreach right so it's creating like my own inbound channel um i've had vps of marketing reach out to me and say hey i like your stuff like i want to you know let's explore outreach i've saw i've seen you talk about integrating it into like our marketing processes so results definitely there uh, don't tell my boss this but like the amount of people that just reach out and like hey like you kind of like they like to think i know what i'm talking about sometimes i just kind of <laughs> have trigger fingers and i just say my thoughts but um you know like just the amount of just opportunities i probably get like two or three recruiters a day reaching out just like for, from great companies right um mm -hmm. saying like hey you know like you know we have this opportunity you look awesome yada 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 that's not my objective right now though right like i love you know i love outreach and, and all that so that's not my objective and, and i'm kind of like queuing up what we're going to get into yeah. on the linkedin but um for me it's just massive results and 
anyone that's consistent on LinkedIn can tell you that, right? Sam Nelson, uh, if y'all don't know him, like you know, blue hair uh, fella on, on LinkedIn from, from outreach, right? Like um, we're lucky he's not in sales, like an account executive, because he would blow everyone out of the water, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, uh, I always tell him he should be, but just the amount of traction that he's helped, not not only f like to build his own brand, but also to help like put the outreach name out there for the business, right? Um, mm -hmm. And help actually funnel leads in for the other account executives. So um, internally, seen huge results on that, right? Uh, f from you, right? Like. Scott, we help have you reach out to people you're connected with at some of our accounts, right? Mm -hmm. um, and because they know you, right? Like they'll respond and say, hey, like I know Scott, like, yeah, sure, I'll take a meeting. So yeah. um, quantifying that, right? Like it, for us right now, like my objective specifically is like pipeline for not only me, but for our team, right? To help build yeah. the business, so. Totally. Yeah. And th there can be this, you know, symbiotic relationship between the brand and the person and it starts, you know, fueling, you can leech off like a, a good brand to start your own business, but then start your own brand. And then when you start building the brand, then you're able to give back to the organization. And so if, if anyone's fighting the, the battle that maybe their brand doesn't want them to spend time doing this, you need to follow some companies that are, are doing this well and utilizing this well, like the outreaches, like the drifts, like the gongs and see the results that they're, they're able to drive. Uh, and quickly on that point, you know, in, in 2019 was one of the times I, I actually aggregated some of my, uh, the deals and things I was working on. And I probably have out proportion results because of my, my target are our sales leaders and marketing leaders who live on LinkedIn a lot. But, you know, I equated about 70% of my uh, deals closed in 2019 were either sourced or influenced by LinkedIn, which is crazy. And that was like a roughly a $1.4 million number. So um, the results are there, you know, you gotta get busy. Uh, we have a question here, Simon says, uh, what does that stuff look like? So we've been talking about stuff you do on LinkedIn. I have a super quick getting started in like four steps kind of framework to maybe answer, answer that quickly. And then we'll go through a couple more points and then we'll start breaking down these, these profiles. Uh, so I kind of, and this goes against some of the best practices, but this is just about like getting started. You need to build habits, right? So at the beginning, you need to go through this kind of listener stage. And that's just showing up, commenting on people's stuff, and really just seeing what people are resonating with in your little target that you're trying to create. Uh, what do you want to be known for? Who do you want to attract? This is when you're in that kind of listening stage. And you can do that for a couple of weeks. Um, and that includes, you know, making sure your profile is up to par. So we'll go over that, that part of the listener stage in my eyes. And then this stuff can become uh, an aggregator. So you're basically just aggregating interesting content that is out there. So go out, find interesting contents that your buy, content that your buyers would like to read and, you know, share that with your audience. And that's simple. It's okay. Include a link. Who cares? No one's going to see it. This is just about building the habits anyway. Um, we all know don't include links. It's not going to be as much people will see it. But at this stage, whatever, it's about building a habit. So share that. Once you've done that for a little while and you've got that muscle flowing, I would go into what I would call the synthesizer mode. So you still have to input a lot of this content that your buyers are going to care about. And you're just going to summarize that existing content into bullet, uh, bullet forms and short sentences and like add your own twist on it a little bit. And you're saving people from going out there and finding all this audience uh, information themselves, right? So that's synthesizer. And then fourth and finally, you're going to hit this, this portion uh, where you see a lot of people um, out there now. Um, but don't jump to this stage and then you're going to become a creator. And that's when you start creating your own content based on the insights you kind of learned from those previous steps and you know, what's going to kind of resonate. So that was long winded, but Simon, that's how I would break down what this stuff we're talking about looks like and maybe a framework to, to get started. Yeah. And a framework I use, it might be useful too, Scott is I, I came up first with like in my industry, what are my dream 100 people? that mm -hmm. I, that, that have a following that I also want, right? Mm -hmm. Like 
what are those dream 100 people? Maybe there's not a ton of people on LinkedIn posting right now, right? And sales, that's easy to do. Um, but if you're in oil and gas, if you're in manufacturing, whatever that is, like find those people, those dream 100s that are posting about your industry, right? Find mm -hmm. those. And then what you can do is every day when you're checking LinkedIn, you can actually see what are they posting about? Because if they have a, a huge following, they know what works. And so you can get inspiration there from those hundred people um, there for your own posts, right? Like build on what they said, reword what they said, don't copy and paste it, but like maybe put your own thoughts on what they said. So I think for, for me, that's what's been most helpful there. Um, and also along the lines of like having a mentality of, you know, creating more than consuming, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the rule. Like if you're really trying to get into this, um, create more than consume you know, put together, follow those 100, dream 100 people, right? Check for 15, 30 minutes a day. What are people talking about? Write some key highlight notes and then go on and create your own, right? So mm -hmm. that that's what's been worked for me. Not sure if it works for everyone else, but <laughs> that's something yeah. that's been very useful because you know what, if these people are posting stuff, once again, I'll say it like, they know what, what's going to resonate. They've been doing it for a while, right? Like if I know you yeah. post something on a topic and I, I know something about it as well, I'm gonna, probably going to write my own perspective on that topic. Um, and I know that people are going to like it because I'm trying to, you know, your people, I'm trying to get those same follow th that same following there. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, all right. Here's a question. Uh, great question. I like it. Is all engagement created equal? So I assume we're talking about like comments, posts, videos, images, links, all these different things. Uh, what do you see affecting if you're trying to reach the most, most people? Oh man. Um, so there, there, two things I think which is interesting is like you have to like give to get right that's kind of the the rule there too but um so on LinkedIn if your strategy is to get in front of as many people to build pipeline right if, if that's what it is with posting um then there's two things I focus on one actually posting and then two commenting on on people's posts that are maybe in your dream 100 right so those mm -hmm. that following can see what you have to say um and maybe just posting more than hey thanks for sharing oh this is cool or this is awesome this is great right uh, mm -hmm. actually posting like a, a thoughtful comment there because your comments are also getting pushed out to other people so i would say those two areas are what's going to give you like the most leverage in terms of engagement activity people coming to your profile um to see you know what you have to offer what's going on in your profile which we'll get to in terms of when they get there that landing page yeah yeah, yeah. Love it. Uh, one more question I'll take from the community. Amanda Bagley. Amanda, what's up? Thanks for joining us. Um, how do you track LinkedIn influence? Is this by direct messages, general posting, and engagement? When I went through and went through it all, uh, it was basically if anyone had interact, whether it was a, a comment, even a like, or a direct message on LinkedIn, I put that out as LinkedIn influence. That's how you can track. It's unfortunately still a super manual process and it took way too long. <laughs> <laughs> to do it, uh, but I was trying to I was trying to prove a prove a point to myself and, and other people. Um, all right, let's keep it rolling. So here's one because this is sales hacker. So we're talking a lot about branding and some marketing things. There's this idea of selling via social, right? We just talked about some of the impact. Uh, what's the right way to sell via social? And is social selling itself? a misnomer do people need to think about it a little bit differently and then because you're part of the average team where does it fit within your sequences yeah that's a great question i'll come at this from the perspective of what i'm seeing across like all the high growth tech sales uh, organizations right and so um in analyzing i'll say that the benefit of you know where I've came from, which is fun. is like, I've got to look at the sales processes of like a thousand plus organizations. And in talking to these people every day, I get to say like, Hey, what are your reps doing that's working and, and what's not working? So let's talk about what's not working today. <laughs> what's not working as you all probably know, this is not rocket science is doing a connection request and going straight for the pitch. I probably don't have to explain that to y'all. Some of you listening could probably receive that. So that is definitely what's not working on the social selling. So um, it, it, I like to call it more of a breadcrumb crumb method. And I have a whole sequence that you can use for this online and I'll put it in the chat or we'll follow up with it. Um, you know, Alex can help us out with that. But on the breadcrumb method, I see social selling as a couple of things. One, 
is phase one, right? Trying to start a conversation. And that conversation doesn't necessarily have to be even about how your product can help or what your solution fits, but starting a conversation with someone, um, one of your target prospects, right? How do you get a conversation started? That is at the essence, like social selling. It's like a human interaction, right? You don't go up to someone at a networking event and say, hey, let me tell you about this cool, awesome thing I have, yada, 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 like here's how it's gonna help your business, you know, 10X your revenue, whatever, whatever. Um, so I think phase one is like starting a conversation. Now, how do you get a conversation started? So I call it the breadcrumb method, which is interesting. One, for the breadcrumb method, you could do your own posts, right? And if you've already sent a connection request to your prospects without pitching and they've accepted it, they're and they're going on LinkedIn, your buyers are there, they, they're potentially gonna see that stuff, right? You're gonna see if your target prospects engage with those posts that you have. If they engage, they know who you're, you are, it's not the first time they're gonna see you. So when they engage with those posts, you can message them and with a, being very human, hey, how's it going? Or, or hey, have you ever thought about this? Hey, I noticed this. Because guess what? If they've never seen you before, they're probably not gonna respond. If they've seen you before, they're more likely to respond. And I'm telling you that this is what's working for people today with, you know, or organizations that I've seen. So again, not being the, when you reach out to them via social, it not being the first time they've seen your face. That's the whole goal, right? Yeah. An another thing too is for those target prospects that you're adding and you're focusing on, having commented on their stuff before do you know how many people are actually like they want to sell a vp of sales right um you know how many people are going and liking how many like reps are going and liking their posts and then actually leaving a thoughtful comment on on that ceo's post or vp's post not many right mm -hmm. like that is how you stand out right mm -hmm. um the, what's it called uh <laughs> one of the writers on linkedin i'm spacing on his name you spent some time with them, Scott, says, how do you, how do you stand out as a, a white dot in a sea of red dots or something mm -hmm. along those lines, right? So again, is that Josh? It comes, is that Josh? That's Josh Brown, yeah. Josh Brown, yeah. 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 Right, so it comes back to like, do what other reps aren't going to take the time to do. And it seems like mm -hmm. a lot of work up front, but trust me, after you add in all those personalized emails that they're not gonna read or not gonna open, it's gonna take you less time to go and leave a thoughtful comment or stuff. And you know what? They're, people post, if, if they do post anything, they post because they want validation that people have seen it, yeah. right? And so just do, like, give them the validation, like it, leave a thoughtful comment, you know, about what they've just posted and don't pitch your product at all. They will see mm -hmm. it, right? You can do that for, I call it phase one, do that for a period of 15 to 30 days on all your target prospects. Set up a sequence that reminds you to do that on 30 or you know, your dream 100 prospects, right? Um, and then do that daily. And then trust me, when you reach out, they will have known your face a little bit more, right? Mm -hmm. They will know who you are. They will see who you are. That's what I think is the concept of social selling, right? Yeah. It's not the hard, hey, here's my product. Here's a message about it. Let, here's 15 minutes on my calendar. That's not it. It's more of a breadcrumb method, right? Where you're kind of leaving, you, you're becoming known by that person, right? Or the mm -hmm. people that you're targeting. Yeah. Tons of, tons of great points in there. Um, all right. I want to go to this question, and then we'll talk a little bit about why LinkedIn profiles are important. And then we have, I think we have like six profiles to review. So we'll get. We'll get busy here, here quick. Um, this is a question from Liam Moore, and I think this is an important question to, to address. It's important on a few different levels. Um, how do you overcome the fear of bro posting as it's coined, or I think <laughs> broetry, there's all this, all this uh, talk about it. I wanna start posting, but don't wanna just be posting fluff that is more obnoxious than valuable for my actual prospects. Great question, Liam. And Andrew, I love your thoughts. I'm gonna jump in quickly with a few suggestions. So uh, number one is the easiest way is just to get another opinion. You know, if you are, are starting out and you have some of this fear, find uh, a friend, ideally not someone who is exactly like you, you know, someone maybe in your marketing department, maybe it's your significant other and just say, hey, can you read this? Like, how am I coming across? Here's my end goal of what I'm trying to get across. Is that coming across? or is it, is it not? And usually if it feels fluffy, it is fluffy. So you're your first line of defense and then get a second, maybe third opinion on your first view. Um, and that would be 
my suggestions on how you handle that. And then also the last piece there is make sure that you're not confusing that, that fear with fear of judgment from your other salespeople. Because salespeople are the worst at this for putting <laughs> down other salespeople who post on LinkedIn because they too are also scared of posting on LinkedIn. And it's this really vicious cycle. Um, if it's coming from a place of authenticity and you're trying to help others, you know, you should think about building community, not building a brand, right? Building a community is helping others. Building a brand is kind of self-serving. So if you make that switch and you're genuinely out there trying to teach and help someone something, um, I don't think it's going to come across the, the wrong way too often. Uh, Andrew, yeah. what are your thoughts? There? Yeah, I mean, great. I, so first things first, Scott, I have my fiance. Um, Annie, who you know, review every one of my posts. Like, I don't play, <laughs> like she's like, yeah, this sounds good. Uh, no, this is fluff, right? Um, and she's actually yeah. a, a sales leader, so um, she'll tell me where it's valuable or not. So that's my cheat code. Um, yeah. But yeah, absolutely, having people review like it, the the mindset I have too, Scott. You made a good point, is like the community aspect, but also for me, I'm like, is this valuable enough where people would reshare it? That's the mindset I have. Would someone reshare this because they think it's that valuable? Um, that's kind of like the question I ask at the end of every post, right? Not every post that I post, you know, gets gets reshared. Um, but I think that that's for me what's helped there is like, will people reshare this? And I think the other thing too is um, if you don't have, you know, fiance or husband or a wife or whatever that is, like shoot it over to your friend in an email beforehand. Hey, is this useful? Like, how can I make this more useful? Um, so that's one thing. Now I always say like <laughs> people are going to coin, um, coin post regardless as bro, you know, as bro writing or whatever the term is here, bro posting, um, regardless, like, you know, when you start posting, people are going to mock, right? Some people are going to say, Hey, this is great. Some people are going to hate it. There was this great quote from a copywriting book that I, that I recently read that said, um, people love me. They hate me. There's no money in the middle. So regardless of what you do, people are going to judge it. Right. So, 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 you know, put down, like write out what you do want to say, definitely look it over, you know, but regardless of what you do, people are going to mock it. So, you know, take control of how you want people to perceive that. Right. And I would say, <laughs> or you can't take control of that, but what you can do is just realize that uh, one, people don't like indifference anyways. So just take a stance on, on what you have to say. I love that. People are going to love me. People are going to hate me. There's no money in the middle. That's, yeah. that's a great, a great quote. And the last thing, and we won't beat this too much and we'll, we're, we're going to move on. Um, we also all live in our bubble, right? So sometimes we forget that we didn't always know all the things that we know now. So sometimes our um, BDRs, for example, at Outreach will come to me and be like, Hey, I, I think I want to do this LinkedIn thing, but I don't think anything I'll have to say is like super valuable. And I'll be like, yeah, it is. Like, think of your first month on the job and how much your current self, who's been at this for a year now, could teach yourself when it was your first month. And then if it's your first month, think of how much your yourself, when it was your first week, could learn from that person. And if it's your first week, how much could you teach someone who's looking to break into this role? So we're all on our different journeys and we always have stuff to teach people. Um, and it, you know, this fluff, it's like, you know, we all have something to teach is, is kind of the point. Um, Jeremy Otto says length of post, min max word length, ideal target. Do uh, you want to sneak that one in before we do this? <laughs> yeah, that, that's the magic question, right? Um, I have no clue on this, right? Like I, I always say, you know, it, the way I think about it is like how I, the framework I use for posts is first line is most important, right? The first line is most important and needs to be consumable. That's your statement. That's your argument, right? Resumes are dead, right? And that cues up our next point coming here. <laughs> but for example, resumes are dead. Whoa, right? That catches your attention. Are they? Like interesting, right? Like maybe I'm looking for a new gig right now. I need to submit a resume. They're dead. What's going on? Um, and then every line supports that argument. If it does not support that first argument that you made in the first line, remove it. It's fluff. And, you know, a great way for me, my mind is always all over the place. I'll just write the post out and not stop and just continue writing as much as I can. And then I delete later. 
and then remove all the fluff later, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you got to come up with what works for you. I don't think it's as much length as it is, are you, is it clear? Is it clear? Clarity yeah. is above everything. If yeah. you can get make a point clear in two sentences, then do two sentences because that that's what's going to make people hit the like button or know who you are or be like, okay, this person like has, has a great perspective. Clarity above everything. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. um, don't add lines just to make it look longer, right? That kind of goes into the bro, you know, poetry thing that we're talking about right now, right? We're like maybe more fluff that's how i see it is like fluffy lines just to be fluffy lines it's mm -hmm. still there's still good info in there it just could have been said in a shorter way so yeah. i always i mean in general shorter is better as long as there's clarity totally what's the mark twain quote if i if i had more time i would have written you a shorter letter and yeah. i love that and it's all about brevity so if you can get your point across in you know two sentences do it sometimes those are the best performing uh ones because you can you, you synthesize an idea in such a succinct way uh, that it really resonates with people. But, all right, last question. Why is a LinkedIn profile important? And then I'm gonna start, uh, we're gonna start with Jenny after this. Why is it important? You, you said a really good story when we were, oh, we were talking about this. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is fun. So um, again, it depends on your objective, right? So it, if you're, think of it as your personal landing page, your personal website, right, that was already like, you know, the pieces were put together for you, right? That's one way to think of it. Now, um, I'll put it in the perspective of someone maybe looking for a job today, right? Um, one of my good friends at Outreach, Shane, he's a, you know, our top recruiter. He's recruited for a number of high growth tech companies. Um, and I was, I sat next to him for a day, just to curious, I was just curious, like, I'm going to work next and I'm going to see like, what's his day look like as a recruiter? Um, and so what I noticed is that he looked at a ton of resumes every day, right? And these are resumes from people at Harvard, or people at MIT, people from top schools, yada, yada, yada. And he would look at the paper resume for about five to 10 seconds, no joke. And then he'd go to LinkedIn and spend about five minutes on their LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. So just to give y'all some perspective on are people looking at this? Yes, they are um, from a resume perspective right? Um, that's the easiest way I'll put it. <laughs> um, yeah. And so that just gives you an idea like, wow, okay. So one, he, he, you know, he makes sure to do things match up is what on their resume is that what's on their LinkedIn. And then two, he wants to see what else he can find on the LinkedIn. What else is interesting that you couldn't fit in the resume, right? Because mm -hmm. you'll probably put more than what's on your resume on, on your LinkedIn profile. And he'll also check your activity, right? Are, are you posting like this is sales specific but um and we are on a sales hacker webinar so um he'll say like are are these people commenting on posts are they posting their own things are do they have their own perspective on what's going on in their field right because that is important today that is part of modern outbound that's what we look for mm -hmm. yeah great points all right let's uh let's dive in we are going to start with jenny we will invite her up all right let's Jenny, hello. hello. Can you hear us? Yeah. Hi, guys. Hey, hello. Jenny. Hello. Welcome. Thanks. All right. Let me pull this up. Okay, perfect. We got Alex doing it. Jenny, thank you for being the first brave one. First off, banner. Killing it. I love the, it. the banner. Uh, you got the, the wards up there. That's huge. A great profile picture. All right. And then the next is kind of like the, the headline. Hold on, Alex, if we can go up a bit. Headline. Andrew, what are your thoughts on this, the, the headline? Um, so a couple of things. Um, there's a, should we break down the pieces of a LinkedIn profile for everyone? Sure. Scott, what do you think? So the first thing is like, again, this is from me putting my recruiter or like my sales leader or like interviewee hat on here. Um, there's a couple pieces. There's the headline banner right the verified first there's the profile picture and then there's the the main headline there on the bottom so uh first thing people see right what do you want to portray um on the headline banner uh or image on the headline banner image 
um, there's a few different approaches. I, I love Jenny's approach here because she's like, hey, look, Verified First is amazing, right? Like we have all these awards, like we're a great company. Okay, let me, let me scroll down a little bit more and see what Verified First is all about or see what she does at Verified First. That's great. I've also seen a few people, which I actually love this take, use it as like a, a, a branding um, opportunity. There's one, I think from Bevy, the VP of sales at Bevy, he has like a Hawaiian shirt on his because he wears nothing but Hawaiian shirts. So you're like, okay, this is a human. He loves that. Um, yeah. Dave Gearhart, right, from Privy, he has Nike shoes because he loves Nike shoes. Um, I personally love Crocs, right? So like I, one day I'm going to change mine to Crocs when, when I get the time there. <laughs> Not everyone. Uh, I know there's Can you spare us that? Let's just, we'll skip <laughs> <that>. <laughs> there's going to be some Croc haters out there, but like I'm going to do the Crocs, right? Uh, and... Just to confirm, that is not uh, a sales hacker verified tip. To change yeah, the no, picture. that is not. That is not. <laughs> yes. Away, so I'll probably never be invited to one of these things again. Um, but <laughs> so that's a great branding opportunity as well, right? So um, Jenny, in the, the next thing, great profile picture, right? Shows personality, super happy, awesome. Like would love to like see what Jenny's about, right? And then the next line, the, head, the headline there, um, there's a couple ways to go about this, right? You can say, you can, you can say things along the lines of like, hey we you know we empower sales teams to crush quota here um what i've seen that i've liked that i've seen a lot of like people really leveraging linkedin using is one how you help the customers here right but not with fluff more with like um exact results right because we want to remove i think hypey language right because when i look at this jenny and I, I feel terrible for like giving feedback like this but no um, we're Okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, so what I would want to see here, it, it, it's kind of like fluffy in a sense, right? I'm like, okay, how does she empower sales teams? I see like a hundred, hundred other reps putting, you know, that they empower sales team. Like, what does that mean? So I can't really like create an image of that in my head, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's very similar to what I see a lot of other profiles doing. Um, the other thing that I see here is like, there's a lot of different kind of segments here mid-market enterprise, small enterprise. That's great if you are if you want recruiters to look at you, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if that's the case right now. I don't know if your boss is on here, so feel free to like, don't not say too much. But um, I think for search results, that's great when people are looking as a recruiter on this profile, right? Mm -hmm. um, if that's not your, you know, objective there, I think a, if we look at objective, if it is to like build your pipeline and close sales, do sales, right? Um, I would stick with one or two ways in how you help customers, right? Mm -hmm. Because here we all see like personal trainer, seller, you know, podcasty. Uh, when, when there's like 10 different roles there, I'm like, so what is it that you actually do? Mm -hmm. That's the first question that I have when I see those. And, and just look, having looked at a ton of like LinkedIn's for you know, interviews and stuff today here at Outreach. That's what I see. I'm like, I like, is this person an AE? Are they not? Like, what are they trying to achieve there? So just a couple of thoughts on that. Scott, how about you, man? Yeah. I mean, um, so there's so much good with this, this profile. Yeah. We went over a lot of it. And one thing I want to highlight there, which Jenny obviously understands pretty intimately is your LinkedIn headline where it says training, leading and empower sales teams to crush quota, think strategically make clients for life. And then all these other ones. It's basically your, your SEL. So think of your search engine optimization like that. When people type in inside sales, Jenny is going to come up, which is, which is good. Um, I do agree with Andrew that it could be, you know, going back to Josh Braun again, like almost a little crispier of copy, like maybe go interview, you know, one of these, uh, one of the sales team leaders that you did help train, lead and empower sales teams to crush your quota, think strategic and make clients for life and see if you can get almost like a quote from them. Like, what did you allow them to do and almost put it in the verbiage that they, they say, um, would be one suggestion here. I think a lot of uh, crush, you know, crush quota, empowering. Some of these words are getting a little, a little buzzwordy. I quickly went through your about section. I think it's amazing. A few things to highlight. About um, is amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Love that. Yeah. So breaks down kind of how she, how how Jenny views the world. Um, you know, some awards, a few mantras. I love the mantra. Perfect mix between like uh, business and 
and showing that you're human. Featured section, you know, this is this is huge. You know, me and Andrew talked about oh, this. Yeah. A lot of people don't use, utilize this featured section. Um, Jenny's doing a, a great job doing it. Um, I think your experience, I went through this briefly, is awesome. I would say Jenny is absolutely nailing it. Um, maybe could A, B test the headline? That would be really my my only suggestion. I would say everyone on this, look at Jenny's profile for, for inspiration. Some good recommendations. Jenny should be giving here. us tips right Thanks, now. Look guys. at these stats. Yeah. <laughs> look at these stats, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed so, it. So that's, that's it. Do you have any um, that's it. Um, so for me, I'm a sales leader. So I was, for me, like I do a lot of hiring and recruiting. I'm in I'm a pretty competitive recruiting market here in Boise. So my goal was like, I need to obviously, you know, align myself with my buyers or my, my sellers buyers as the case often is, but also portraying myself as someone who like an AE or an SDR would want to work for who they would want to come on my team. So does that at all change the headline or how I should be positioning that? Hmm. that yeah, that so is interesting. Andrew, that's ahead. interesting because we talked Jenny, about I, a lot about, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just, so I, um, like from the headline, uh, training leading, I probably would have thought you were like a consultant or something, Jenny. Um, on, on that headline, that's just my personal opinion. Take it with a grain of salt, right? No, so, that, no, that, really good feedback yeah i like i would have thought like you were a consultant that's what i see like a lot of so like hey i i help with all these things here right um if your objective i would say and i'm coming at it from my perspective if your objective is to high is like really hiring which it should be as a director right like bringing on like star star talent um like i would put a great one sentence line on like why people love working for you mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. like make from that first line i'm like okay i would love to work for this person as soon as i go to your profile like uh, right get specific on how you empower sales teams like what do you do that no one else does that makes you stand out that way when i see that i'm like okay this is awesome i scroll down oh she's a director cool like i was actually thinking of applying to this company right um you know for a gig so i would in that first line say like what makes you unique in in how you lead your teams or or what it is that you do Right. Um, that's what I would say on that one. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. That's super helpful. Yeah. 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 My, my two cents there on, on that is, um, also I think we all get kind of married to our headlines. We're like, Oh, this is how I want to portray myself. This is the one. And this is, this is what yeah. I think it can be a lot more fluid as your, as your hiring needs change, as, as your goals change that, that can change right with you. Um, so I would look at it as um, whatever is the most pressing for you right now, whether it's driving pipeline, hiring, recruiting, whatever it is, you know, do a, a one sentence, easily digestible uh, headline. But, Super helpful. Yeah. yeah. Thank okay. you, Jenny. Thank, thanks for being Thank for you, the, the first brave one. Uh, Boise is amazing. To, to meet you. Good to meet you. All right, next up, I think we have Megan, Megan O'Keefe. Hello. Hello, Megan, how's it going? Good, how are you guys? Good, Excellent. hey Megan. All right, let's do it, let me pull this up. All right, Megan, do you wanna do a super quick, maybe uh, background on, on uh, just on what a I little do. bio on you? <laughs> Give us a little context. Yeah, mine's a, a little more untraditional than a normal sales role. So yeah. um, I'm in economic development and basically my whole um, position is to recruit companies to expand or relocate to the area. Cool. Awesome. Oh, Thank you for that. The first thing that stands out to me, uh, which is something I kind of play around with with my headline, I think emojis and different uh, type of text so you've got your concierge to the city of st pete in a in a different text than most people are used to um i think that's super valuable it always catches catches my eye my eye when that uh when that happens what do you think about that 
hands or emojis and, and yeah, anything that's I, I, eye catching. I'm still trying to figure out how people do that. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, I'm a, it definitely catches my eye, so and I'm trying to figure it out. So um, yeah. that that stands out too. Um, yeah, so you'll have to give me a tip on that, Megan, on how you're you're changing the text there. But um, your concierge to the city of St. Pete. Um, let us help you in your Florida expansion or relocation. Um, okay. Yeah. So when I think, um, not to tear this apart, like when I first saw this concierge, <laughs> whenever I think concierge to the city of St. Pete, I thought it was like something related to hotels. Right, just to give you my first feedback when I think mm -hmm. concierge, I'm like hotel. Um, let us help you in your floor expansion or relocation. Okay, um, I like that. Right, like expanding mm -hmm. to Florida, bring it. So that kind of gets the point across. Um, not too much to say. It says what you what you do. It stands out. I, I kind of like it. Right. I my my two cents there. So mm -hmm. Megan, I think you have an awesome profile picture. You're smiley. That's perfect. You've got the city of Florida in the background. That makes total sense. The one thing I would say with the headline and the about section is I think it does a really good job describing what you do. It doesn't do the greatest job describing who you are. Like what, yeah. what's Megan all about? Uh, give, me, give me a little bit of like flavor personality of kind of what you stand for as an individual um, and not just the problems and, and uh, solutions that you, that you provide. And I, I think that would be really my my only feedback i'm looking at your experience i like how you have it broken down on kind of your your day-to-day -day tasks i think there's two different arguments you can either make it for uh your career growth which is kind of what you've done where you've outlined mm -hmm. you know everything that you do and that should help with probably future opportunities there is an argument where you can make that uh, more focused around your buyer and and how you help them i don't think yeah. either way is is necessarily wrong uh, skills and endorsements. You've got some recommendations. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. honestly, the only thing I would say is try and try and in your headline and in the about section, humanize yourself a little bit. You know, have a little bit of fun with it, um, and try and weave in some of your awesome personality into it. That would yeah. be my two cents. And then another thing too is like the first thing that I think of here, Megan, when I come to this, is I see um, I, I did get the point in your headline um, text my first question after I read that is why would outreach expand us to Florida? What's the benefit of that? So a couple of things you could do is maybe in the headline banner image is, I don't know if your company has one, or if you want to make one on Canva is put like three bullet points on why people are removed, like coming down to Florida, right. Or expanding okay. to Florida. Yeah. I like right? that. that. That's one thing. Another thing you could do is like, if you don't want to post a ton on like, LinkedIn and you're not about that all good um, although we, we do say you should do it that's what a lot of this webinar was but mm -hmm. you should add the featured section under the about mm -hmm. right and add a featured section and in that featured section highlight three posts that you have that go into the details on why people are expanding to Florida okay. right yeah, the like big that. benefits and who cares how many likes you know your your profile gets or whatever or your your um your your post gets it's a way just for you to expand on why people are moving to Florida and teach me something new that I did not know. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so those are two things that I would do just from, you know, Hey, my first thoughts are why would I do that? And maybe if you're, you know, doing sales development right now, trying to find people to do this, right. Calling in the companies to do it. Um, I'm going to already have a couple of reasons why it's kind of, kind of enticed me to be like, all right, maybe I should talk with Megan a little bit more, understand how that is. Right. What are the tax implications? What are the the cost? You know, why you know why have less taxes when I moved to Florida? Yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And you're well on your way. Almost 5K followers. Yeah. You're killing it. So yeah, keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Megan. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks. Thanks, Megan. All right. We'll sneak one more in here. I think it was Ralph who was next in line i believe all right let's see if we can unmute i'm Un unmuted hey ralph how's it going man hey finally nice to talk to you it's great you've yeah. become one of my favorite hosts <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> man thank you thank you for saying that we appreciate you being being part of the community here all right let's let's do the breakdown andrew you want to kick us off yeah, let's do that here. Um, looks like you have a pending request to him too, Scott. Uh, 
Yeah, Ralph, how, no acceptance there yet? What's going on there? Oh, no, I think I think that's Alex. No. Oh, is this that is Alex? not my oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. okay. Um, so, Ralph, first things, for what really stands out to me, uh, New York City, Wagner College. Um, it, I'm trying to understand, like, is that where you went to college? Um, yes. How that's associated? Okay, got it, got it. So... Okay, got it. My spread. Scroll up to the about, Scott. This is, this is Alex controlling this. Okay, cool. Um, so a couple of things. I, I would say that – you want to start, Scott? No, go for it. Go for it. I was going to say a couple of things here out the, the top headline image there. Um, for where you went to college, like I love that. It's a little like pixely, not to be, you know – too tough on that but it's a little pixely i kind of had to like squint to see like what's going on there um, and then my second thought is hey like ralph really loves his college like maybe he's using it when he reaches out to people um to, to find alumni that went to the same college and then reach out to them and he wants them to see that is that part of your goal here that that's not true okay not <laughs> okay wrong <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think I think may, I, I would suggest maybe looking at a different different banner, um, yeah. less less pixelated version um, of the image. I don't know if the the college is overly relevant to your your prospects and your buyers. Mm -hmm. Maybe think of something. Maybe work with your you know your marketing team at uh, NCS Plus. If you want to do a banner like that, uh, you can do it, or just something that you know does mean something to you uh, that. I, I don't think the college is, is super uh, relevant no. at this point. That's my, I, my suggestion. I like Jenny's. I didn't uh, look at it, but when I saw yeah. it, 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 it was made a good sense. One. Yes. It was a good one, yeah. Getting, getting something like that, maybe working with your marketing team. There's also tools like Canva that make it super easy to create your own graphics like that. And I think there's even like LinkedIn banner uh, specific ones in Canva. Uh, so, so check that out. Um, the other thing is, uh, so I like the, the I like the headline. The team we team up with top tier firms to maximize revenue at the lowest cost available. That's good. Um, I would maybe get rid of uh, your your last name in that. Uh, that's just me. I would say uh, we we team up with top tier firms to maximize revenue at the lowest cost uh, available. Um, Andrew, what else you got here, man? Yeah, uh, the fir I was confused by the uh, the the first. Well, not confused, but I'd remove the last name as the first word in that, as, mm -hmm. as Scott mentioned there. Um, and then I would say for you know teaming up with top tier firms to max around revenue at lowest cost available. Um, uh, and then maybe put I would put something to make it more consumable. Like I'm still like, what does that mean? Again, I'm trying to like create an image in my head. Um, what does that mean? Maximize revenue at the lowest cost available. Great executive speak, right? Like that's what they want to hear. Maximize cost, lower cost, lower risk, et cetera, et cetera. Um, something that I saw someone do recently, which was interesting to get uh, some more views here was then after a line like this, say, let's talk about how I did it for XYZ company. And they put in like Snowflake, right? Um, they gave an example of how they did it for a big known name that's super popular in the market right now. Because um, mm -hmm. that's like, oh, these people work with Snowflake. Cool. Um, that might be interesting there. It is. Yeah. yeah so, absolutely. Yeah, that's one I way. The, and then the about section down below, um, just in general, this about section, I think – it's one of my favorite um, sections here. I'm, I'm not saying – really what it can do is bring out your personality, right? Like helps you stand out about yourself, right? When, when these – this is coming, you know, from a recruiter friend. But um, when, he, when they look at the about sections, they want to understand why are you different from the other person that's a top performer. I have two top performers. Like why is this the top performer that's going to fit our culture, right? So I think here – what you're about, what makes you who you are. Um, I, I like to go more of that approach versus a, an additional way to do a sales pitch, right? Um, so that's my take on the about section. Go for the branding. I'm not saying right about how much you love Crocs because Ralph, I don't know if you love Crocs. That might be only me. Um, but, you know, <laughs> use this as a, as a 
place to show here's who I am and here's the results I like to produce. Um, here's how I bring out my personality in, in achieving those results over the past 10, 20, you know, however many years. Good stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Ralph. Appreciate yep. the support. Thank you, Ralph. Uh, we'll see you on a, you. another webinar shortly, yeah. my friend. Awesome. All right. That takes us to time. Andrew, thank you, man. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was fun. Um, yeah, that was I fun. hope that was valuable to, to everyone in, in the community. Thank you, as always. Thanks for, for following along, letting us go through your profiles. Y'all are the best. I appreciate you. Andrew, uh, I hope you get down to uh, Mexico again soon. You living Sunday? Uh, yeah, leave it Sunday to Mexico. Going there. Lucky guy. Lucky <laughs> yeah. guy. Getting to some right. cleaner air here. But thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Um, feel free to check us out on LinkedIn. C come judge our profiles. Leave us some tips. What do you think Good about call. those, right? Scott and I were talking about ours and saying, huh, there's some things we could even do on our own profiles here, right? Based on always. analyzing this. So always testing, you. always optimizing, never perfect. Always, always. Thank you guys. And feel free to yeah, ask any questions.